we've just screened scripting and museum piece and uh, we've got some people from both those productions rather than going from right to left I'm going from left to right mm -hmm. introduce yourself and tell us about what your involvement was in the film my name is Reese Manigan and I'm the director I wrote the script and I star as Eddie in scripting uh, my name is Charlotte Campbell I star as Patricia in scripting and my name's Lena Richardson, and I play the museum curator in Museum Piece. Now, the first question I've got for you, Reese, before I forget. Um, the bench, the bench had the name Patricia on it, didn't it? It did. It did. Was that intentional? No. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> no, we we found lucky. out after, and then we were like, perfect, if it was fake to use it. <laughs> That was, uh, yeah, it was great. It was great to do that. Um, and how long did the whole shoot take? Um, well, we actually started shooting last year this time. Um, it was around when we had a very hot week in May. And with the first scenes I shot was the scenes in Waltham Abbey um, with Charlotte. Um, it was the scenes where we meet. Um, we have like a sort of picnic in the park sort of scene. Um, and the, some of the backgrounds where we're like walking around on the bridge and everything. So those were the first scenes we shot. And second day was on the Queen's Jubilee, actually, we shot it um, at my flat. And we shot, I'd say, about 85% of the film there. Um, and then the last scene where I shot was when I, um, Eddie's about to jump over the river at the Canary Wharf area. Okay. And Lena? Um, talk a little bit about the production of Museum Piece. Um, well, Museum Piece, I think we shot that in about four hours. We had a, a time constraint because that was as much as we could hire the Preston Park Manor for. So, um, yeah, that was uh, quite a challenge because you had to be very mindful of the fact that these are real pieces around, um, not props that we've hired. Uh, so when we were moving around, particularly when um, Jerome was moving backwards, he had to be guided down the hallway because of those tall statuette things. Um, so, yeah. And getting changed in between each scene, we had to keep going up two or three flights of stairs. Um, yeah, so it was, it was quite time-consuming in between <laughs> times. But, yeah, I think we just about managed to do it. It's quite a lot to snag <laughs> in four hours, isn't it? Well, it is really, yeah, yeah. Um, where, do you know, I know, you know, some of your team aren't here, but um, no. do you know where the idea originated? Yeah, apparently um, Stephen, who was the writer, he'd been to a stately home and he said that as he was walking around this stately home, he, uh, each time he walked into a room, he thought, that lady looks like she was in the room I've just been in. And he said, Gosh, <laughs> that would be a really good idea for a, for a plot. Yeah. So that's where it came from, basically. Yeah. Charlotte, when did you come into the project? Um, I think it was um, end, I think it was end of 2021, because me and Reese, we'd worked together. We, I've known him since 2000. Five years. Yep. <laughs> very, very long time. <laughs> and uh, so we'd worked on like mainly a lot of comedy stuff and a lot of like shorts you can find on YouTube and which I would highly check, recommend. Shameless plug, I know. <laughs> and uh, um, so he called me up and he said, Look, I've got this idea for a script. And I think it was the, kind of probably the first drama that he's ever pitched to me. And when he talked me through the, because um, it was, he, I knew it was a sequel to his previous film, The Donkey, which he'd also submitted, which was about this ra revolving around the same character of Eddie. And so this was kind of more of a sequel film. And... Uh, and so, because it's been getting a lot of quite a good, quite good attention, and he'd come up with this story, and that I want you to be play Patricia, and I thought, like, oh, okay. And he was the way he described it. I thought he knew which buttons to press, and uh, and I said, well, okay, just send me the script, and I really liked it, and I thought, yep, yeah, let's do it. And I think it was like probably five, six months later. Yeah, it was. It was around before we started shooting. Because I remember, I we we was on the phone for about an hour yeah. talking about this role because. You know, you can't just randomly cast someone and say, oh, you're going to play someone who's going to get cancer and then you're going to die. You know, it's just, it's, it just doesn't work like that. You have to, because the, the rock, because the thing is, Eddie, you know, I've played him before, as, as Charlie was saying, and obviously I had to think, right, he's got to go on a new emotional adventure. 
And uh, by the way, I am actually autistic. I'm not playing someone who is autistic. I am actually autistic. And um, just in case there's any like offended people out there. Um, but basically, um, I thought there's got to be something else I can talk with this character. And the idea of like, you know, because it's basically about him trying to find love because he's non-verbal, you know, he can't communicate with people. And I was like that when I was much younger, you know, I did not communicate with anybody, you know. And so I thought, what if I took that previous part of myself, but the age I am now, and see where it could go? And it was just about him trying to see if he could socialize and find somebody who understood him. And when I spoke to Charlotte about the role and said, look, you're gonna be playing this love interest, but it's gonna go in this direction. And the thing is, I knew Charlotte could do it. Charlotte was immediately in my brain when I wrote it, because I've worked with Charlotte, as I said, only for five years, and this is no word of a lie, she's the best actress I've ever worked with. And I've met a lot of actresses, and I've worked with many people, and it's a term I've just met and not liked. Um, but Charlotte, you know, she can do everything, sing, dance, do everything. And I'm always honored that she, she does all these big productions and everything, and there's this little pipsqueak filmmaker, that's me, with no budget on any film that I do, but always have these ideas. And when she works on a project that I do, I know the film is going to be good because of her, not because of what I've done, because of how she's going to do it. Oh, that's nice. Aww. 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 <laughs> so, I mean, you're quite prolific in your activity, aren't you, in terms of, like, your online content? <laughs> yes. Uh, Could you clarify that? <laughs> what, 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 <laughs> when you start transitioning into making films that you're submitting to film festivals, mm -hmm. how, does, how does that work for you, like, in terms of the, the dynamic, both mentally and, you know, because, as I said, you, you, you know, you're out there with... It seems like you're doing something every other day. I do a lot of filmmaking, yes. Um, because I don't like to stop working on a project. If I've got an idea that I'm working on, I would like to think of like five more ideas after. Maybe even doing back to back, maybe even just say, oh, I'm gonna do that one next year, this one, whenever. Some projects don't get made, and sometimes I shell them for a little while. Um, there was one project I remember making, um, it's based on Peer and the Wolf. I actually had the idea since 2017, that I didn't make it until, no, sorry, uh, 2014, didn't make it until 2017. Wow. So it was shelved for three years. Um, but So let's say, for example, because um, I know there's a lot of people that don't know my work, I do like a uh, little web series. There's one called Outsmart, there's one called Archie and Jim, all comedies, all this sort of thing. But they're only for YouTube. And I don't put like, there is effort made into it, obviously, but not as like a film festival project. So with a film festival project, it has to be, with a lot of care, you have to know what shots you're doing, how it's gonna look. The acting has to be spot on because even with this, I'm, even with Charlotte, I was like, look, I didn't like that way, do that again. You know, I, it had to be spot yeah. on. Um, but with other stuff I do, like if I wanna get out there, it, it's just kind of like, right, that's for YouTube, get it out there, boom, people are gonna watch it, they're gonna love it, it's, you know. But for, for film festival projects, it has to be made with a lot of care and making sure that this is something that people are going to understand what it is I'm trying to do, because also it's autism awareness, so it has to be quite serious. Um, but yeah, it's every project is a lot of work, but I like to get content out there because I'm trying to show my passion for telling stories. I don't care about money, you know, getting to Hollywood, anything like that. It's a load of rubbish to me. To me, it's just, if I've got a story to tell, I will go out to make it. And if it goes up, amazing. If it doesn't, I'll keep going until I do it. I mean, I've been making films for 18 years and I'm still climbing the ladder. And I can honestly say from, from then on till now, I've gone higher each way and it feels like I have. Even though it doesn't look like I probably have, it definitely feels like I have. You definitely are. <laughs> that was my mum, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's, let's talk the autism side of this, because do you think that the autism is, is what makes you so prolific in this? Like, you, you, the creativity, do you think that is... Well, I, <laughs> I, I definitely see a different point of view than everybody else. Um, I mean, if you watch some of the comedies I come up with, I don't know why or how they've been executed you have to tell charlotte as well um but basically i like to come up with very very original stuff um and i think yeah the autism side does come from that because there are times where i've pitched ideas 
And people just sort of look and go, what the hell are you on about? Like, seriously, well, you know. And I mean, like, I look at some of the stuff now, and I think, it, like, an episode of Archie and Jim, for example, when I do, because it's about these two idiots who do money-making schemes and stuff like that. But if I was to pitch some of the episodes to a television network, they would immediately kick me out the door. They'd say, we can't do this, this doesn't make any... But then when I do make it for YouTube, they look and they go, that's quite fun. And I go, yeah, but you guys didn't want it. But now I've sort of had to make it onto you, you know. So possibly, yeah, but it, it's basically about my perspective from what I can see. Um, and if people don't get it, that's fine. If they do, then, then that's great. But I just go with what my perspective is. I don't follow what, oh, you have to do it like this and like that. And, because there's no rules to me. To me, it's being creative is, is your own rule, you know. So just be yourself when you make it. And Lena, mm. you carry quite a lot of weight in museum piece in terms mm. of, you know, like the, you know, it's essentially, it's just a two-hander, isn't it? Yeah. Um, how did you find that process on this production? <coughs> um, I thought it was fun because basically with the three characters, I knew that she had to have a through line. She still had to be the same person, but obviously with each one, there had to be a slight change. So I found that quite fun to, to do that. And obviously being in that specific room as well, I found that, was, that really added mm. to the atmosphere because you were surrounded by so much that was real. You know, not just one or two odd pops, but everything that was in that room was mm. was real. And the costumes were actually my own, and I had to right, yeah. Nice. And I did have to send them to the Preston Park Manor to have them checked for moths because um, <laughs> yeah, I did. I had to um, even. But they do have their own costume store, so I yeah. could have used their costumes. But I had my own, and I knew they fitted me. So, mm -hmm. um, but I had to send them all in first to check that they were all okay. But yeah, no, I, th I thought it was good fun to do. Yeah, really and I've worked with Stephen before. Yeah. He's, yeah. I really enjoyed the first the first portion, you know, when everything's kind of normal. Yeah. When he <laughs> first walks into that room and has the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, what's next? What are you working on next? Um, well, the next film for Stephen is he's just given me a new script, which I won't say anything about, but we're in the very early stages of it, and it's something completely different again for me. Because up to now, I've played quite similar roles. I seem to keep getting offered quite similar roles. So I wanted to do something completely different. Um, so definitely look out for that because we're going to be working on that one next. And then I'm working on a project with James Alexander Allen, who's, who's got a film coming out next month. We're starting work on that. So, yeah. You work at various ends of the acting spectrum in terms of the financial budgets behind them. Where do you, in terms of like personal enjoyment, where do you enjoy, you know, do you enjoy the freedom of these little tiny micro budget films like Museum Peace? You know, yeah. do you enjoy that? Do you find, I, you know, just when I speak to some people, they turn around and say that they really enjoy those little tiny films more than some of the bigger budget productions they work on just because of that level of freedom that they experience through that. Yeah, I suppose it's a bit more of an intimate experience and you feel that you can actually contribute a bit more and there's more time usually to, to be able to do that. Mm. Um, whereas on a bigger production, uh, you know, depending on the size of your role, you're not going to have so much time to, to input, if you like, mm. extra things. Um, but no, I enjoy them both for different reasons. I've just done a, a small role in a house. No, no small is a small role. Mm. No role is a small role, yeah. as they say. But anyway, <laughs> small, it's a, only small yes, actors. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. um, in a Howard Ford uh, film, mm -hmm. which was um, completely different. So you've got more things at their disposal. And of course, it's, it's um, a totally different experience. Yeah. But I enjoy both of them for different reasons. Yeah. yeah. Have you got any questions out there? Oh, one straight in front. Mm. Well, this is quick for the breeze. Um, I'm going to try and work this straight in front of me. Basically, we talk about the autism, about what part of the filmmaking process, not only part of which, um, you find more difficult, maybe, because of your position? So I just want to try and raise my hand. Um, well, so you, um, yeah. which part I find more difficult? Yeah, what, in the whole thing? Probably the casting, um, definitely, um, because it's so hard to find actors who try to understand 
you're trying to do something original, um, different, but all they care about is self-image and their looks. They don't care about, and money as well. You know, I could write probably the best scripts I've ever written and they still don't want to do it. They could have a role that could be very different they're looking for and they still don't want to do it. So yeah, definitely the casting. But with me now, because I've been making films for 18 years, I've met so many people. I now have what I've called my cast family. People who have done big stuff, who go out doing big stuff. But there was one actor, I won't give out his name, but he's done some big stuff. He's done James Bond, he's been in loads of stuff. He's actually going to have a little part in the Indiana Jones film and everything. And he one time said to me, he prefers working with me than any of the big Hollywood directors he's worked with because he loves the roles I give him. And he was saying that basically I'm the better director than I am with the big, huge directors out there. And I thought that was a massive compliment because I thought, you know, obviously I've made it, but he was like, no, no. He's like, the roles you've given me in the scripts are so much more original, they're different, and I like how you've got this different perspective of everything. And then he saw one of my final films, he loved the way it was edited and everything. And, um, you know, so yeah, the casting is definitely difficult, but like I said, if you've got the right people involved, like Charlotte and Charlie and um, everybody who's in the film and the people I know now, then it's gonna be a smooth ride. You know, so yeah, the casting is the most difficult part, and probably sometimes the filming as well, in terms of locations, and sometimes some actors don't show up, or there's always tube strikes. Uh, you know, um, but yeah, those are probably the I'd say. But it doesn't stop me because if I've got an idea that I want to make, like I said, it will come out just later on. You know, so nothing's ever cancelled to me. It's just put on hold. Oh, oh cool. it's not actually a question, but I just wanted to say that when I was watching it towards the end, when it turned out that you had cancer, I was almost wondering whether or not this dramatic event might have actually made you verbalise. And I, I, I was really sitting there waiting for it to happen almost. I mean, it doesn't matter that it didn't because mm. it was beautiful anyway, but I just thought, oh, is he going to say something now? Because this is quite a dramatic you know, and they sometimes say, don't they, people mm. who don't talk, all of a sudden something very dramatic happens and and suddenly they speak. But no, it's just a, an I observation. The same thing, so oh, did you? you oh. <laughs> Any other questions out here? One, one, We've got two. There's, okay. one there. There's one in the front yeah. and one, yeah, one front. at the back as yeah. well. Um, hi there, another question for you, Sketchaloo. Um, do you know the going to the school that you Um, not in general, no. Um, I, I wish I could, but um, there's the thing is, I've even when I try to do something like that, or even something related to film, no one wants to know. Like when I was doing the donkey, the first autism awareness project, I actually contacted the autism awareness charities. They didn't want to know. Don't know why, but they didn't want to know. So it's sometimes I just find it ridiculous when you try to put yourself out there. You try to knock on the door, you try to get yourself to say, look, you know, I'm doing something good. But for some reason, no one wants to know. So it, I prefer now for people to come to me rather than me going to them because all my life I've been the one knocking on the door. So for once, I'm now waiting for people to knock on the door to me to say, give us your advice, let us know. And then I'm happy to give whatever they want to hear. But, um, but like for Ron for Film Festival, when they chose it and they wanted to screen. So that was definitely the first knock on the door to say, right, this is my messages I'm trying to send out. Hopefully everyone pays attention to what it is I'm trying to get out of there. Okay, thanks. Uh, very much. I mean, you are local, are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm London based, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. No worries, thank you. Yeah. Had another question. I think there's another one over there, there, one over there. The corner, yeah. Any more projects you're both working on? And if I could be in them. 
Well, the second question is no. <laughs> That's, your answer That's Reese's that. brother, by the way. Um, That's Reese's brother, by the, the way. First, the first um, question, um, what we're working on. Um, well, as far as what I'm working on, there is going to be a sequel to this film, another sequel. It's going to be called Discrimination. Um, and Eddie is going to be on another adventure, but he's not the main character this time. He's going to be the helper, not him helping, not him looking for help. But I'm not going to give too much about that one. Um, he's also going to be the star of the next Christmas special for Christmas Day on my YouTube channel. Um, it's called Christmas Threes. And um, basically, he finds out he's going to be an uncle. And he tries to find a present for this little baby, um, which is going to be born on Christmas Day. But as he goes on this journey to find a present, he meets someone from his past, someone he knows presently, and someone he's going to know in the future. So there's a mix of like the Jesus story and Christmas Carol there. Um, so that's going to come out on Christmas Day. I'm working on the next horror short, The Raven. Just filmed a segment last week. Um, and uh, there's another few things I'm going to be working on. Oh, yeah, I've just finished out Smired Series 2 for YouTube, and Series 3 will be written in the summer, um, and there will be some casting available if anyone wants to be interested in that. Unpaid, of course. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's a very fun series, so I do recommend you check it out. So that's what I'll be working on in the next uh, year or so. Excellent. Um, I do... <laughs> well, so the probably the next thing I'm working on, it's not film related, it's actually theatre related, because I'd started off before I'd met Reese, and so I was doing a lot of theatre, particularly when I'd finished my training. And uh, we do have a, can I plug a theatre show? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So um, we've been working on it since 2022. Um, so we've been creating the script. It's a, it's a play called And Breathe. It's a drama slash black comedy um, ironically because we talk, is, uh, Patricia has cancer it's also another man who's in his 60s who's also been diagnosed with cancer so very odd through line that's kind of like this keeps following me I don't know why <laughs> and uh, um, so it's the play focuses on how not only the cancer has affected him but also how it's impacted his relationship his other relationships so with his wife and also his daughter who I play and how things just kind of unravel but it also has this kind of like very dark comedy and kind of very awkward humor as well as the story the the, the drama that kind of unfolds as it goes along and it just gets more and more crazy. <laughs> and so yeah, it's, that's gonna be uh, the end of July. So it's gonna be in um, uh, it's a little place called uh, in South Kensington. I'm, there are gonna be more details. A little place, yeah. South Kensington. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's the Drayton Arms, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's gonna be, so the <clears throat> final week of July, so 25th to the 29th of July. So that's when that's all going to happen. So this is my shameless plug. So I apologise. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. So yeah. So it's getting not. Yeah, you probably follow my social media again, similar to what Mike said in uh, Chris. Follow me on social media, <laughs> and uh, there will be more details coming out about that. Excellent. Well, listen. Thank you very much, uh, filmmakers. Really appreciated you coming today and being part of this Q and A. Show the films that you. Thank you, Frank. Thank, thank you so much for having us. Thank you.